Back in 2016, when the AI race was just about to begin, a 19-year-old kid started something that quietly became one of the most essential resources for the world's tech giants. Scale AI. You might not be familiar with the name, but it's the backbone for giants like NVIDIA, OpenAI, General Motors, Microsoft, and Meta. This company is the secret provider of human resources and high-quality training data for all the biggest names in the tech world. And when we knew about them, that got us thinking, how did a teenager end up building a company that powers some of the world's most powerful tech? How did Scale AI even come to life? And why do these massive companies rely on it to keep their operations running smoothly? Let's put some light on it. In 2015, Alexander was at MIT studying computer science. He was acing his classes and was on track to graduate with perfect grades. But even with all that success, that young guy had a bigger vision. He believed that AI and machine learning were going to change the world, and he wanted to be part of it. He saw that machines could do much more than just basic tasks like arithmetic. They could eventually do things that required human-like understanding. This was what excited him. To dig deeper into AI, Alexander worked on a simple but interesting project, figuring out when to restock his fridge. He decided to set up a camera to check the contents of his fridge, like seeing if he was running low on milk. But as he started building this, he hit a roadblock. There wasn't enough data available to train his system properly. At that point, Alexander realized something. A lot of people were interested in building AI, but they couldn't do it because there wasn't enough organized, labeled data to help the systems learn. This gave him a huge insight. If AI was going to progress, it needed more and better data. And that's when Scale AI started taking shape. Alexander saw a gap in the market. Companies needed high quality labeled data sets to train their AI models. So he set out to solve that problem. At the same time, Lucy Guo was on her own path. While studying at Carnegie Mellon, Lucy applied for the Thiel Fellowship which offers $100,000 to young entrepreneurs with big ideas. But there's a catch. You have to drop out of school. So in her senior year, she took the leap and left school behind. Her first startup didn't work out due to some legal issues, but Lucy didn't give up. She interned at Facebook and later worked as a product designer at Quora and Snapchat. That's where she met Alexander. Together, they co-founded Scale AI, and shortly after, they were accepted into Y Combinator, a startup accelerator that helps businesses grow. They raised $120,000 in seed funding and got started. They initially focused on autonomous vehicles. Since self-driving cars needed tons of labeled images to train their AI systems, Scale AI was there to provide that data. As the company grew, they realized there was a lot more potential beyond self-driving cars. So, Scale AI expanded into other industries like satellite imagery, e-commerce, and more. By 2018, the company was doing so well that both Alexander and Lucy were named to Forbes' 30 Under 30 list. But after a few years, Lucy decided to leave Scale AI to start her own venture capital firm, Backend Capital. She said the reason for leaving was simply a difference in culture and goals between her and the company. The early days of scale. I were a mix of hustle and good fortune. Interestingly, Alexander's name has eight letters. And in Chinese culture, eight is considered a lucky number because it sounds like the word for wealth. Whether that's just a coincidence or not, things definitely worked out for him. One of the first major supporters of scale AI was Dan Levine from Excel. He didn't just invest $4.5 million in the company, he went a step further and let the team set up their workspace in his basement. By 2019, Scale AI caught the attention of Peter Thiel's Founders Fund, which backed the company with a huge $100 million investment. According to top market researchers, Scale AI reached an impressive valuation of $14 billion in mid-2024, with a new $1 billion investment led by Axel. Alexander still owns 15% of the company, which makes him one of the youngest self-made billionaires. When companies build machine learning models, whether it's for self-driving cars, virtual assistants, or even medical breakthroughs, everything starts with data. But raw data on its own isn't very useful. 
It needs to be organized, labeled, and structured so that the AI can actually learn from it. That's where Scale AI comes in. The company specializes in data annotation, which is just a fancy way of saying they tag and label data to make it understandable for machines. Suppose you're training an AI to recognize animals. Scale AI ensures a picture of a cat is labeled as cat, not dog, or something random like chair. This kind of precise labeling is known as ground truth data, and it's super important. Without it, AI models would learn the wrong things and give unreliable results. As of September 2024, Scale AI organizes its services into three main areas. Build AI, Apply AI, and Evaluate AI, each one helping companies at a different stage of their AI journey. Build AI includes the Scale Data Engine, which supports three major industries, generative AI like ChatGPT-style tools, government projects, and the automotive sector like self-driving cars. It's all about getting the right data to train powerful AI models from scratch. Apply AI is where companies put their AI models to work. This includes Scale Donovan, a platform that helps businesses deploy AI and the Scale Gen AI platform, which is built to make generative AI even more effective for different tasks. Evaluate AI helps companies test and improve their AI models to make sure they're working the way they should. This service covers model development, public sector projects, and large-scale business uses. It's all about fine-tuning AI to be more accurate and reliable. At the end of the day, Scale AI's job is to make sure companies have the high-quality data they need to build, apply, and improve their AI systems. That's why so many of the biggest names in tech rely on them to keep their AI running smoothly and getting smarter. Now, let's take a step back. Scale AI's success isn't just about advanced tech, it's also the people. In the beginning, the company outsourced data labeling to agencies in regions like Southeast Asia and Africa, but soon, they realized they could handle this process more efficiently on their own. So, in 2017, Scale quietly launched Remotasks, a platform that now employs over 240,000 people across 90 countries, from Kenya and the Philippines to Venezuela. These workers, often based in internet cafes or small rented offices, started with simple tasks like tagging images. But as AI technology advanced, so did their work. They now handle more complex projects, like creating data that trains AI to write text, generate images, or even assist with autonomous driving systems. Over time, they shifted into even more high-stakes work, specifically in the defense sector. Since 2019, they've been working with the U.S. military using AI to analyze satellite images. One of their key roles has been tracking bomb damage in Ukraine after Russia's attacks. To handle this sensitive data securely, Scale set up an office in St. Louis with exclusively picked American workers to ensure everything stays tightly controlled. However, Scale's not alone in this sandbox. There's some more names like Surge AI, Labelbox, and Snorkel. AI are trying to make their own space in the data labeling market. But Alexander isn't too worried about the competition. He told Forbes, I would say that we've been working on this problem longer and have built more technology than anyone else. And honestly, it's not just the technology that keeps scale ahead. A big part of it is Alexander himself. William Hockey, a billionaire and co-founder of Plaid, who sits on Scale's board, put it plainly about Alexander. He has an absolutely insane work ethic like nobody I've ever met. Alexander pushes his team to question everything, test ideas with data, and pinpoint the real problems, so that they can solve them as soon as possible and remain at the top. So now, you've definitely got the question, where is Alexander taking scale? The guy born in 1997, around 28 years old. If you're keeping track, he's already making waves in both tech and defense. Some believe he's steering scale toward even deeper government partnerships, possibly venturing into AI-driven defense systems. Others think he might take the company public, turning that massive $14 billion valuation into an even bigger win. It's pretty amazing when you think about it. A guy who could have easily finished MIT but chose to drop out and ended up building one of the most powerful companies in the world. It surely makes you think, if you had an idea that big, would you risk it all to make it happen?